Let's take a break from complex eigenvalues and eigenvectors just for a minute uh, to explore 2 by 2 matrices that have this particular format uh, with A on the main diagonal the same number and B and its additive opposite on the off diagonals. Uh, the book likes to call this matrix C. Uh, so let's take a little bit of time to explore this matrix C and if uh, chapter 1 is still fresh in your brain, which I'm sure it is. Uh, it might be, again, reminding you of this idea of the rotation matrix. The rotation matrix has this same format of same number on the main diagonal, additive opposites on the off diagonal. Uh, the only difference between a rotation matrix and our matrix C is, of course, that um, cosine and sine have to be values between 0 and 1 whereas r values don't have to be there and a could be a million and b could be negative 500. But let's explore this c, this this first vector in c, the a, b one. So if we plotted a, b, uh, that would mean you go a over and b up. So the vector a, b looks about like that. And this is already starting to look trig-like. And it is. Matter of fact, having a vector a, b sort of automatically defines an angle. And to go ahead and fully get triangle about it, uh, the length of the vector, which is the hypotenuse of the triangle, uh, is the square root of a squared plus b squared. So what I'm going to do with my matrix C here is I'm going to factor an R out of it. So I'm going to rewrite this matrix as R times, and keep in mind when you multiply a matrix by a scalar it multiplies all four entries. So when you factor the R out, it factors out of all four entries. So it is true that I can take any C matrix in this format and factor it into into a scalar. And keep in mind a scalar is just the mathematical word for multiplying by a constant, which in the terms of vectors just makes them longer or shorter. And then this part, I'm going to claim now is a pure rotation matrix. Um, look at the format here. A over R from my picture, A over R adjacent over hypotenuse, A over R is the cosine of this angle. So we've got cosine of the angle, cosine of the angle, sine, and negative of sine of the angle. So this is purely a rotation. So all this to say that any matrix that's in the C format can be looked at as a rotation and a scaling factor. Uh, it turns out that we are not actually going to, for the most part, not going to actually break it down that way we're just going to leave it in C format but the important point for you to take away from this is a matrix in the C format accomplishes a rotation and a scaling. Okay so now let's step back into the world of complex eigenvalues and eigenvectors and maybe just take a look at a quick example. Uh, let's see so let's get rid of that Get rid of that for the moment, and uh, let's take a look at this particular 2x2 two two matrix. Um, not in the C format, it's just some random 2x2. Two two. And I've already uh, found the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors, or at least the eigenvector for 5 minus i. And I think think that I double-checked this. Hold on a second. 
yeah, I just double checked this. I made a tiny little mistake right here in my eigenvector. This is actually negative one minus i. Okay. Anyway, I'm not walking through that process right now because you know how to do that. So I just want to jump straight into introducing Theorem 9 for you. So let's take a look at Theorem 9 from the book, which says, uh, let A be some 2 by 2 matrix with real entries, so the original entries in the matrix, not complex numbers, uh, real 2 by 2 matrix, but it does have complex eigenvalues. In particular, they're focusing on the a minus b i 1, which is what I did here as well, 5 minus 1 i, and an associated eigenvector v. So there's my v. Uh, it claims that then you should be able to break a down into a p times a c times a p inverse, where c has this format that we've already talked about. Uh, so it basically says you can break down any 2 by 2 matrix, even one with complex eigenvalues, into something times a rotation and scaling times something else. And they tell you how to build this something else too. They say P is the real, is made, its columns are made out of the real part of the eigenvector and the imaginary part of the eigenvector. Uh, so let's take a look and see if we can break that down for our particular A matrix. Uh, so we have 4, negative 2, 1, 6. That's our A matrix. And we should be able to break that down into a P, which we'll get to in a minute. P times a C times a P inverse. Okay, so the C uh, is made up of the A and the B from the eigenvalue. So the A, so for us the A is 5 and the B um, is negative 1. I guess actually this is written in the form A minus BI. So for us the B is actually positive 1 since the minus is built into the formula. So be careful with that. Uh, that could be an easy place to make a mistake on the homework. So for the form A minus BI, our A is 5 and our B is 1. Okay, uh, let's get fives, a's, on the main diagonal. b is 1, negative b is negative 1. Okay, so there's our c matrix. Uh, again, notice it's not a pure rotation. We would have to factor out the square root of a squared plus b squared. So um, 20, we'd have to factor out the square root of 26 to make it a pure rotation. So there's a scaling and a rotation there. Uh, but anyway, that's our c matrix. Uh, the P matrix is supposed to be made up of the real part of V as the first column, and then the imaginary part of V as the second column. So the real parts of V are negative 1 and 1, so negative 1 and 1. The imaginary parts are, so this I has a negative 1, and this I down here, 0. Uh, so there's our P. Our P inverse is just the inverse of P. You can use a matrix calculator to find the inverse. Or 2 by 2s, it's not too hard to find the inverse. We know we swap the entries on the main diagonal and change the signs on the off diagonal. And we also have to multiply by 1 over the determinant. The determinant happens to be 0 minus negative 1 happens to be 1. Uh, so that is uh, the inverse right there. But if it's not that easy, feel free to use a matrix calculator. Okay, so apparently we have broken down, or factored A from a single 2 by 2 matrix, which seems simple enough, into three 
two by two matrices, which seems more complicated. So first of all, let's check and make sure that our factoring is even correct. And then secondly, let's talk about why the heck we'd want to do this. How is it helpful? Okay, so I'll carefully type this into a matrix calculator. Uh, those three matrices, and let's just multiply them together to make sure that it really is a correct factoring for 4, negative 2, 1, 6, which it is. Okay, so at least there's some verification that it works mechanically. Uh, but let's talk about why we would even care about this. So what we are trying to do is we're trying to unlock what A does especially over the long term as a transition matrix. That's kind of the whole point of eigenvalues and eigenvectors is to say, hey, what do these matrices do over the long run? And we have seen that the matrix A with its complex eigenvalues has hidden within it a rotation and a scaling factor. And whatever this P does, we undo it over here. Uh, so really, I think the best way to look at this P is look at that as some change of basis uh, matrix. Uh, and then we're changing back with P inverse. So whatever A does, we can decompose it into a change of basis, then a rotation and scaling, and then change back to the original basis. Uh, so if you look in the book, they have a nice little picture of one of these uh, matrices. Uh, this particular one, they set it up so that the scaling factor was 1 in here. Um, so this C turned out to be a pure rotation in their particular example, uh, and not also scaling. Uh, but this is what it looks like. Uh, they took some vector they picked at random and multiplied it by A over and over again. So the first time it moved to X1, then it moved to X2, then X3, X4. So there's the first 9 if you count X0. And then the other dots are the, the next 100. They're a full 100 iterations. So you see it ends up being a rotation, although not a rotation around a circle. And it ends up being a rotation around axes, bases, uh, that look about like this. So that's where you get your change of basis and apparently the change of basis was two bases that one of them looked like this and one of them looked like this and they rotated with those basis vectors. This gives us the secret behavior of any matrix with complex eigenvalues. We've just been doing this with a 2 by 2 it also works with a 3x3 three three or a 10x10, 10 10, although those are harder to visualize. Uh, but any matrix with complex eigenvalues is a rotation. And if there's no scaling factor, it's a pure rotation. If there is a scaling factor, this, this spirals outward or possibly inward. Um, and that's going to unlock our application in the next section analyzing what happens with something that are called discrete dynamical systems, which we use to analyze a lot of real life behavior. It's one of these places where complex numbers allow us to predict real life behavior. Um, so 5.5 is just locking down the skills, the computational skills for complex eigenvalues and this PCP inverse factoring. And 5.6 looks at the application of it and that will finish the course for us. Uh, so in the next video, I'll do one or two homework examples so you have the full idea of what's going on, and then we'll, we'll be done with 5.5 and almost done with the course.